Welcome everyone and welcome to the Something Corny studio once again. In this video I'm going to show you another one of my favourite plaits. It's a plait that I use for a lot of projects but also I really enjoy teaching this plait too. It's a plait called the Fill the Gap plait and basically that's what we're going to do is fill the gap. And in this video I'm going to show you how to form the fill the gap plait with four straws and also using six straws. Now I've already dampened my straws so they're all ready to work so let's have a look at that now. Okay on the table in front of me I've got two examples of the plaits that we're going to do today. The one in the front is the four straw fill the gap plait and the one at the back is the six straw fill the gap plait and you can see there's quite a difference between them and it's well worth learning how to do both because they come into play in your projects in different ways. So if I show you the examples I have on the table of where I've used the fill the gap plait, if I start off with this little lady here and bring her towards the camera to let you have a closer look, I've actually used the four straw fill the gap plait for her arms. And because it's a nice flexible plait, it allows me to bend the arms round into a nice shape for her. But then if I take the heart, bring it closer, I've actually used the six straw fill the gap um, plait for this one because I wanted a chunkier plait. I wanted it to look a little bit more robust. Okay, so I'll bring in four straws that I've already dampened and I've already tied um, just below the heads. And when we're working with this plait, we work with the heads hanging down. Even if you don't want to keep the heads on for a project, I would always recommend plaiting with them on. It just adds a little bit of weight to your work and much easier, it makes it much easier for you to hold. So if we take the four straws and we're gonna splay them out now imagine that we have five spokes in a wheel. So we have a wheel and we have got one, two, three, four spokes and the fifth spoke is actually missing. So evenly space your straws out, but imagine there's a fifth straw there or a fifth spoke and that's missing. And the plait really is what it says it's going to be. It's a fill the gap plait. So what we're going to be doing is filling this gap with a straw. So to do that, we need to jump over one straw. So I want to jump this straw. So I'm going to bring this straw into play first and it's going to jump this straw and come towards me into this position. And then I'm going to move one straw clockwise and fold it over to fill the gap that was left with the previous straw. And of course, by moving this straw out of place, I've now left a gap here. So I go one straw clockwise, lift that straw, move it over into that position. One straw clockwise, so there's the one I've just moved. One straw clockwise, bring it into the previous straw's position. And this is the plait. You just keep repeating this. Always think, move one clockwise and fill the gap. One clockwise and fill the gap. And remember that the straw is jumping one straw to fill that gap. So if you're unsure which straw you're looking for, just think, where is the gap? And then you know that you need to jump one straw, so it must be this straw that's going to, to be the, the next moving straw. So one straw clockwise, jump into the gap. Try as you're plaiting to fold the straw over the centre here. So make sure that that straw is always folding over the centre and not working its way away um, from the middle. And also try to make sure that as you come across, cut this angle in half with this straw. So this straw is equidistant 
to the other two. And that will just keep your work neater. And with this plait, it's a good idea to get into a rhythm and just keep going round and round like this. Now you'll notice how I'm using my hands and my, my left thumb especially comes into play quite a lot to control the other straws. I like to have my straws almost sitting on top of my first finger and my middle finger, almost like a little table here. And I use a combination of fingers and thumbs depending on what's the easiest as I'm going round. So sometimes my thumbs come into play, sometimes it's the fingers. The, the hold really is what's comfortable for you, but this is how I find it works works for me and I'll let you have a little look to see what's happening underneath my hand here and you can see how the plaits beginning to form and you would just continue in this way right up as for as long as you need the plait to be and then when you want to come to the end just bring the four straws back together again and then tie up right at the end of the plait as I did if I bring in the original one that I showed you you can see I've just plaited right up as far as I wanted to go and then I've tied off with a clove hitch. A nice thing about this plait as well is that it's actually a bit flexible and you can stretch it a little bit as well. I wouldn't stretch it too far but it is a plait that you can stretch out a little bit and it gives you a slightly different look. So if we then go on to look at the six straw fill the gap plait. So if I pop that straws down and bring six straws into the, the mix, it's really working on a very similar principle. So splay out the straws and this time my wheel will have seven spokes instead of five. So evenly splay the straws out. And again, I've left my gap here where my hand is. So this time, instead of jumping one, we're actually going to jump two straws. So I'm going to count the two straws that we're going to jump. And it's the third straw back that I'm going to start with. So this straw is actually going to jump over both of these and it will fill the gap. So if I do that now, you can see. And of course, by doing that, I've now left the gap here. So we go one straw clockwise again. So it's exactly like we did with the four straw, but this time we jump two to fill that gap. So again, we go one straw clockwise, which is this one. And the gap is in here now. So I bring the straw over to fill. So one straw clockwise, jump two to fill the gap, which is here. And again, Find a position that's comfortable for your hands. And I use my fingers or my thumbs to keep all the straws in position so that they don't escape from me. And again, I'm holding it in exactly the same way between my first finger and my middle finger. Make um, a little table for myself there, which lets me see what's happening. But of course, the secret of this um, plait really is to keep your eye on that gap and always make sure that you know exactly where the gap is and then it's quite easy to know which straw is going to come across and fill it. So remember with this one it's exactly the same as the four straw fill the gap but this time instead of jumping one you're jumping two straws. So you, you take the next straw clockwise but jump two. And again, with this one, you'll continue for as long as you need to before you tie it up. I think you'll agree that they're really pretty little plaits. And um, once you practice the plait and you know the route that the straw is going to take, you'll actually find that you get into a very good rhythm um, with your plaiting. And the more rhythmical you can make your plaiting, the neater the plaiting will be. So let's just have one last look at the, the plaits all together. Um, in front of me here is the one that I've just been working on, the six straw fill the gap plait. 
and I'll continue after the video and um, finish this plait off. And here's the, the completed six straw fill the gap plait. And at the back here, we've got the two four straw fill the gaps. Um, so remember with the four straw, you're only jumping one straw. And with the six straw, you're jumping two straws to fill the gap. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If it's a new plait to you, then continue practicing it. And I'm sure it's a plait that you will use in many projects for time to come. Thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.